Now, when we think of slavery, what, what normally will come to mind for us are all things that are wrong, that the scripture does not uh, allow for. You think about people just being beaten and like treated horribly and being stolen from other countries and brought here on boats and just forced into labor. That is not right. Okay, when people are, are, are stolen, right, if someone just goes and just rounds up a group of people, we already saw what God's law is on man stealers. Remember, someone's going to steal a person and sell them. That's the death penalty. So just right off the bat, if you think of like American slaves or something like that, you know, something that happened in this country hundreds of years ago, the Bible doesn't endorse what, you know, what that was all about. Also, one of the reasons why people are going to bring up slavery and say, oh, you know, the Bible endorses slavery is because the modern versions of the Bible use the word slavery when the King James Bible doesn't. You can find the word slave or slavery, a form of slave, like two times in the, in the King James Bible. One is in the book of Revelation. I forget where the other reference is off the top of my head, but it's mentioned twice. So it's not that they didn't have the word, but it wasn't used because it wasn't, I don't think it's really appropriate word for describing what the Bible describes. The Bible describes servants. So there's servants and masters. Now, there's two different types of servants that you'll find in Scripture. There's the hired servant, which is very common that you'll find, like, today even. If you wanted to think of a servant-master relationship that would be a hired servant, you're an employee for someone who's your boss, right? If you think of servant and master, it's boss-employee, right? That's the other way around, employee-boss. That would be in, in many areas of the, of the scripture when it's talking about servants, that's the type of relationship it's talking about. You have someone who's ruling over you because you're employed by them. You are hired by them to do a job. They're going to tell you what to do. And as a servant, you're supposed to do what they tell you to do, right? But you're not bound to that employer as a hired servant, just like today. If your employer tells you to do something that you don't want to do, if they tell you, no, you need to do this, you can quit. You can leave. You don't have to remain employed by that person. That is a hired servant status. Okay. The other type of servitude or servant in the Bible is a bond servant because they are bound. They are obligated and, they mu and, and you, you lose freedom when you are a bond servant. Okay, now I'm not going to try to sugarcoat the Bible at all because it is what it is and it says what it says. And we need to just be able, like I said before, accept God's word for what it is. And as I get through this, hopefully you understand that the Bible is right. We don't want to get so zealous and, and far reaching in our own morality and maybe in what has been taught to us and ingrained in us in our own hatred of slavery in general, which again, I'm not saying that, you know, slavery is a good thing. And the Bible's not saying that slavery is a good thing. But when you're dealing with a, a sinful world, there are situations that come up that just need to be dealt with one way or another. And God's system of justice is the right one. Amen. Okay. Say, what, what do you mean by all this, and what does this have to do with someone being a slave or a bondservant? Well, I had you turn to Exodus 22. We covered this last week, but I, I brushed over it. When it has to do, first of all, if someone is a thief, right? If someone's stealing something from someone else, we went over God's justice system and how God's system is better than our system where the victim is paid two times or seven times or five times, you know, whatever, whatever the judgment is that's appropriate, the victim gets reimbursed for their loss, for everything else, and that is a punishment to the perpetrator. But in Exodus 22, look at verse number one, the Bible says, if a man steal 
If a man shall steal an ox or a sheep and kill it or sell it, he shall restore five oxen for an ox and four sheep for a sheep. If a thief be found breaking up and be smitten that he die, there shall be no blood shed for him. Look at verse number three. If the sun be risen upon him, there shall be blood shed for him, for he should make full restitution. So this is, you catch a thief, he needs to pay and make a full restitution to the person that he stole from. But then it says, if he have nothing. So you got someone who's poor, they don't have anything, and they go to steal, probably because they don't have anything, and they, they, they're in need, and they want something, and they decide to just take from somebody else. So if they don't have anything, it says, then he shall be sold for his theft. So when a person is sold, they become a bond servant, because at that point, he's lost his freedom. When you steal from someone else, you have to pay it back. 